One day while he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting nearby. They had come out from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with him to heal. Of course it was. Just then, some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a bed. They were trying to bring him in to Jesus, but finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and let him down with his bed through the tiles into the middle of the crowd. Must have been quite a scene. I assume that those tiles hooked to each other. They didn't have to do any carpentry work. They they couldn't get to him because Jesus was probably sitting down. The rabbi usually sat to, to teach. And the people would have been sitting also. And as they got to the front door, which probably had people spilling outside, With those people sitting there, there was no way to get him in there without really asking everyone to get up, disrupting whatever Jesus was doing. I think they finally figured out that the simplest way to do this was to haul the the paralyzed guy up on the roof uh, and to remove some of the tiles over where they estimated our Lord was. And then they must have had it with four ropes, one on each corner. Uh, They let him down into the midst. If their aim was right, he landed right in front of Jesus. I don't know how good their aim was. But... If they were trying to do it in a way that didn't disrupt, I don't think they succeeded. (laughs) You're going to notice a man being lowered through the roof. (laughs) And Jesus probably stopped speaking, okay? Now, it indicates that even our Lord was a bit amazed. So they let him down on the bed through the tiles into the middle of the crowd in front of Jesus. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to him, friend, I always look for those things that Jesus calls people, friend, son, daughter, always some intimacy. Friend, and here's what he said to him. I mean, we expect, we expect him to heal the guy. And that probably is what the guy is expecting. And maybe those in the crowd are expecting this too if they have heard that Jesus heals other people in the community from time to time. <laughs> but that's not what Jesus says first. Jesus says, friend, your sins are forgiven you. Now, let me tell you something. You don't do that. I mean, I I do not have the authority (laughs) to tell you (laughs) that your sins are forgiven you. When I tell you that, and when I remind myself that my sins are forgiven, it's only on the authority of God Almighty, because obviously only God can forgive sins. Well, the people who were gathered there in front of Jesus, the regular folks and also the scribes and the Pharisees, they did understand that there was one other individual, one other individual who would be able to forgive sins. 
And that was the Messiah when he came. So you see what they're thinking. This, this guy, this rabbi, this itinerant preacher, we would call him today, has just said something that nobody should say. And he just said something we've never heard anybody say. And he seems to be doing it on his own authority. So who does he think he is? He said, friend, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to question, who is this man who is speaking blasphemy? who can forgive sins, but God alone. And when Jesus perceived their questioning, he answered them. They hadn't said anything yet, but he knew what they were thinking. Even I would have known what they were thinking. He said, why do you raise questions in your heart? And this, this is a question I've actually never known the answer to. He said, which is easier to forgive sins or to say, stand up and walk? Well, actually, I think for God, uh, neither of them is hard. I think for God, either one is a piece of cake. <laughs> but he says, which is easier? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the one who was paralyzed, I say to you, stand up, pick up your bed, and go to your own house. And immediately, the man stood up in front of them. He took up what he'd been lying on and went to his home, glorifying God. Amazement seized all of them, and they glorified God also. For they were filled with awe, saying, we have seen strange things today. You and I know that our Lord has the authority to forgive sins, your sins, and my sins. You also know he's already told us that they are forgiven. It doesn't seem fair even the sins of those who don't ask him, they are forgiven because he has already taken them upon himself and let us go free. Now, it doesn't make a difference in our lives unless we accept that forgiveness, unless we know it. If we don't know it, we're still stuck with the same old guilt and the same old pain. You know, some words we read, they... Um, they speak to me. We said this. We do not leave, lean our lives fully on you. We do not trust everything to your care. We have not let you, God, carry all of our burdens, and we have not accepted all of the love that you want to give us. And when we come forward in a minute 
and receive the ashes. What we're saying is, Lord, we are willing to accept your love for us. And we accept your forgiveness. And we will try to understand that when we do that, every mess we've ever made, every unkind word we've ever spoken, every heart we've ever broken, that it's wiped away. And God is not going to hold anything against us. This is his word to us tonight. This is his word to all of us tonight. Our